Welcome to Style with Trish. Today our guest is Dr. Tanisha Bibbs. Stay tuned. Every day a woman With Trish. Today we have the amazing, beautiful Dr. Tanisha Bibbs. And you have a doctorate. I'm going to have you say the word because I don't want to mess it up. Humanitarian. Doctor of Humanitarian. Of Humanitarian. Mm -hmm. uh, but you're also, I'm going to just read the list because sure. it's quite a few things that you do. Um, pregnancy and postpartum health coach. Yes. Of course, you're an author and a speaker. Uh, postpartum doula lactation. Mm-hmm. I said that right? Yes, you Okay. Did. Sure Counselor did. and the perinatal mental health coach. Yes. Um, and of course, all of this is surrounding uh, pregnancy and um, aftercare of, of the mom. Uh, the lactation, it's where you're teaching the mom how to breastfeed. Is, yes. is that correct? Okay. So break down how you started in this. How did you, I won't say fall into this industry, um, but how did it come about in your life? Well, that's a really good question. It came mm -hmm. about several years ago. Okay. Um, I was a 25 year beauty industry veteran. Mm -hmm. So I taught cosmetology mm -hmm. um, and I was at work one day. I was I remember working at Smart Styles okay. and I was like, man, I ain't making no money. I was like, like $7 <laughs> an hour. Mm -hmm. It's got to be something different out here. Right. Um, but I just didn't know what it was. Mm -hmm. And a lady walked in and she asked me to curl her hair mm -hmm. and I curled her hair and I started talking to her and she was like, I'm in newborn services. I said, oh, what is that? Mm -hmm. And she was like, I do, you know, with the newborns, we go to the house at night. Mm -hmm. And I told her I was interested. Mm. And so that same week she hired me. Okay. And I started working and she, my first job I went on, um, basically they, they, they kind of see if you, if you're ready for the position, they take you into the, the home with them mm -hmm. to see. And the lady who actually trained me was sleep. Okay. And I took over the entire night. And that next, that next day she said, I didn't have to tell her to do anything. She, she changed the baby, swallowed the baby, did everything. Mm -hmm. And I, and I had a job that was over 10 years ago. That is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, so this, there are actual moms who hire you to come in and while they're sleeping during the night, you're caring for the newborn. Exactly. And Ooh. so I worked with her, I worked with this company for nine years mm -hmm. and then I went on my own. Mm -hmm. um, I've been in business for five years, have grown um, in the Atlanta you know, Atlanta area, mm -hmm. as well as Charlotte, North Carolina. Oh, okay. So we're located in both locations. Okay. And you have um, people that uh, work under you at both locations. Okay. Yep, I have contractors that work under me and, mm -hmm. um, in both locations. Okay. That's amazing. We're going to go and talk about your years in, in fashion and, yeah. and doing hair, and then we'll come back to that. Um, so you said you had, what, 20-something years? 25 years 25. Um, in the beauty industry. Mm -hmm. I also was a beauty recipient of the Bonner Brothers. Uh -huh. um, first, I won first place okay. um, in their competition. Mm -hmm. And then I also went on to be a platform artist okay. with Tropical Roots mm -hmm. and Influence. Mm -hmm. And also taught trichology. Um, for the influence hair care system. Okay. What so is trichology? That's when the person is like the study of the scalp, like, okay. you know, of uh, alopecia or oh, okay. traction alopecia, the different types of hair loss. Oh, okay. So I went into that as well mm -hmm. and um, decided that, you know, five years ago I retired from the beauty industry. Mm -hmm. But I still have students that call me. Right. And, you know, I get right. my information and stuff. So right. Yeah. That's why you're so stylish because you know well, all about you. this stuff. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so that's amazing. And so we heard about your transition from that industry into uh, this one. And so some of these titles, first of all, um, tell us the process of how you were awarded Doctor of Humanitarian. So um, with the Doctor of Humanitarian, you have to, they look over the years of mm -hmm. what you have done in your industry, mm -hmm. uh, what you have contributed to what your expertise or whatever you do. So for instance, if you're in fashion mm -hmm. and you've been doing this for years, mm -hmm. um, they look at your contributions, your don't, uh, 
you donated your time, all mm -hmm. of those things, and they they honor you with the doctorate, such as Martin Luther King was uh, given an honorary doctorate. Oh, okay. Uh, Coretta Scott King was given an honorary doctorate. Most people was given. Uh, Kanye West was given mm -hmm. an honorary doctorate because he is, you know, like some people they go they can go to college, mm -hmm. they get their doctorate, they do their hours, mm -hmm. but sometimes you also do your hours by being in the field. Right. right. So um, and that's how I was able to be nominated for that. And mm -hmm. the good thing about it is is that when you're set up in that type of position, mm -hmm. you meet so many great people. Right. And I was able to now be able to do my own honorarium for mm -hmm. birth work, which is really unheard of. Oh, okay. Yeah, so. Okay, cool. Well, congratulations on Thank that. Thank you. Um, let's talk about uh, pregnancy and postpartum. Actually, um, your areas of, of expertise. What are some of the things that... Um, we may not be aware of that happens during that postpartum uh, period, not just for the baby, but also for the mother. Well, you know, when, once you have a baby, your hormones can be pretty much all over the place. Mm -hmm. um, and so when it, as it relates to postpartum, let's just say in the mom, mm -hmm. um, a lot of things that we should need to be aware of. Okay. And that is um, her mood changes, if mm -hmm. she's connected to her baby or not, mm -hmm. if she also is showing anxiety and mm -hmm. stress. Mm -hmm. uh, so much information is given out at the hospital mm -hmm. that is sometimes conflicting. Yeah. And so when the mom come home, uh, one of the things that I try to do is is give her that peace, mm -hmm. you know, that um, that she's doing okay and mm -hmm. that she doesn't have to know everything right. all at one time because it could be very stressful on her. Mm -hmm. So I think the first thing as it relates to postpartum mm -hmm. is to identify um, you know, her moods and those type of things after the baby and make sure that she's okay. Mm -hmm. I think that when, I think because with time, you know, back, especially back when I had my mm -hmm. daughter, yeah. all of that stuff, awareness and things of that nature was not readily available, but I did go to, um, pre, was it prenatal, prenatal, uh, Lamaze, Lamaze and stuff like that. Don't you think that would be a good idea for for moms, all moms to be able to have that type of service to do the Lamaze and, and know what to expect, but also for the the spouses or the partners that's going to be in there to be able to identify certain things that may occur after birth. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's important because the Maz is great. I went mm -hmm. to Maz as well, but mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I serve more of the high end areas mm -hmm. as Buckhead and mm -hmm. Johns Creek and things like that. And mm -hmm. so my moms, they have a support group. Okay. Uh, their community is their support group. Okay. So at the same time, I think when we start building more par parenting classes mm -hmm. and being more um, personal, like going to their homes, right. and making them feel more comfortable, I think that's also is needed as well. Mm -hmm. A part of what I do is that, mm -hmm. you know, I do parenting classes or okay. I go and talk to them one on one mm -hmm. and kind of prepare them, give them pamphlets. And then we also go to the hospital once they have the baby mm -hmm. and we work with them through lactation, even though they have a lactation consultant at the hospital, mm -hmm. we are still accessible to them. Yeah. So they won't feel like they're by themselves. But I think that's important. I think with it the is. With the Lamaze classes and having the fathers of you know, there to support mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and to uh, give them also a list or just show them these mm -hmm. are some of the signs to look for yeah. in postpartum yeah. because it's not, you know, dads go through postpartum too. We don't yeah. know, talk about that yeah, as well. That's true. So. That's true. Um, when speaking on the lactation and how they have them in the hospital, for me, I didn't, and I took Lamaze and, and all of that. And actually that was, we start, we were doing some YouTubing at that time. Yeah. Um, but one thing that I did not realize is that you don't get your milk right away. Um, and they had, well, this when is what I milk? learned. Right. After I had her, um, they were telling my milk hadn't come in yet. And so they had her latch on. You're going to teach me in this okay. moment. And so they would have <laughs> her latch on. Right? <laughs> <laughs> they okay. would have her latch on and they was telling me. And so the nurse came in or whoever she was came in and she said, well, your milk hasn't come in yet. Mm -hmm. And so they wanted to use a spoon to give her the canned milk. And I didn't want her to have that. So 
even though I did the Lamaze, I still was totally ignorant. And I still felt like even when I got in the, con in the hospital and had her, it's still the knowledge base just yeah, was not yeah. there. Well, see, Lamaze deal with breathing. Um, and that's okay. part of the reason why you would have a birth coach. Okay. Um, and I think uh, we'll talk about that a little bit, but yeah. that's part of the reason of having a birth coach mm -hmm. is to coach you through that mm -hmm. process of breathing while you're in labor. Okay. But when it comes to lactation, mm -hmm. that deals with the breast. It deals with the anatomy mm -hmm. and the physiology makeup of of your breast. Mm -hmm. And so what happened is a lot of people, they get basic knowledge of breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. So while you're in the hospital, they'll say something like that, mm -hmm. um, which is incorrect information. Mm -hmm. It's not evidence-based. Okay. So technically what happens is once your placenta is released out of your body, mm -hmm. your milk opens up. Just It just ah, starts just like that. Okay. And so it, it's nothing, you know, unless there's a delay somewhere, mm -hmm. whether it's your hormones, whether it's something going on with your body, mm -hmm. you know, something, you know, you had something happen a long time ago. Mm -hmm. But normally what mm -hmm. happens is, is that your colostrum, which is that fat, is mm -hmm. the one that the baby needs. It's the right. one that lines the stomach. It's the one that pushes that black poop, which is called the meconium, mm -hmm. out of the baby. Mm -hmm. That's what is needed. Mm -hmm. So what happens is, is babies, the, when the babies are born, they do what's called uh, clustered feeding, mm -hmm. which means they'll probably feed every 10 minutes, okay. every five minutes. So technically what the nurse should have said was you have to have your baby on your breast consistently yeah. in order for the transitional milk to come through. But mm -hmm. what she did was she gave you a spoon with some right. formula in it. Right. And so that that's just lack of knowledge. Yeah. You know, um, and a lot of times, you know, when we've been doing something for so long, mm -hmm. we tend to not you know, push ourselves for more, education. for more education. Hold that thought. We're going to take a really quick break. Guys, we'll be right back with Dr. Tanisha Bibbs. Welcome to Trisha's Treasures. This is where I share some of my favorite beloved products that I use on myself with you. Today on Trisha's Treasure, we're featuring this wonderful book by Dr. Tanisha Bibbs, and it is called True Beauty Uncovered. What I like about this book is that she's sharing different tips. First of all, she's sharing her journey, her, her personal journey of being able to overcome and conquer her self-hate, her self-demise. And she's giving tips on how you can do the same in your life. And Dr. Bibbs is definitely doing this in this book. We talk about here on the show all the time. We're about building self-worth and, and making ourselves healthier on the inside uh, before working on the outside. And this book right here will help you do that. This is definitely a Trisha's treasure. Have you ever thought about having your own talk show? Well, you don't have to question yourself any further. From concept to completion, Mark Squared Studios can easily take you through a traditional three-step process for any video production. Whether it's a small business commercial, talk show, cooking show, or even a web miniseries. Contact us today and we'll help you unbox your creativity. Welcome back to Style with Trish. We're continuing our conversation with Dr. Tanisha Bibbs. And before the break, you were you were kind of educating us on how the breast milk um, occurs and what happens during that phase. Can you expound on that? Absolutely. Okay. So you have the first phase, which is the colostrum phase. Mm -hmm. That phase, you'll notice that once uh, you have your baby, immediately they need to put the baby on the breast. Okay. And the reason why they put the baby on the breast immediately because it helps set up the rest of the breastfeed mm -hmm. for that, you know, the time that you're going to breastfeed. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the colostrum is more, um, is, a, is like thick, mm -hmm. but it's also short-lived basically. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, it lasts probably about three days, maybe mm -hmm. even five days. Mm -hmm. And what happened is, is that your baby will do what's called cluster, cluster feeding. Mm -hmm. So they'll constantly be on your breast. Mm -hmm. So while you're at the hospital, if you choose to just breastfeed mm -hmm. um, and you lay the baby down and the baby's crying again, and then mm -hmm. they're saying, oh, the baby's not getting enough. That's because the baby needs to be on your breast. Okay. So it might be on, I know your body's tired from pushing and mm -hmm. all of this, but your baby has to be consistently on mm -hmm. your breast if mm -hmm. that's what 
you know, th that mom choose to do mm -hmm. to exclusively breastfeed. Yeah. And then it goes through a system. So it goes to transitional milk, which would probably be four, maybe five days later. And mm -hmm. it lasts for a few days, maybe a week or two. Okay. And then it goes into the mature milk okay. that, 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 uh, transitional milk is a little thin. Mm -hmm. Um, so it may only, you know, help your baby satisfy your baby for a few hours. Okay. Um, but they also will still cl uh, cluster feed. Okay. And then there's one thing I want to add mm -hmm. in 10 days after a baby's born, they go through a growth spurt. Okay. So they increase in mm -hmm. the milk that, and what they want to, you know, what they need to eat. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, mom may go through like, um, a transition herself mm -hmm. where she's eating more. Okay. She needs to be hydrated a lot, mm -hmm. those type of things. And then it goes to the mature milk, which would be more fat, okay. more thick mm -hmm. uh, for the baby. And so yeah. do you suggest even for moms who um, are not really wanting to be full-time breastfeeders, uh, even is it important to get at least the first couple of weeks um, of that type milk? Is that beneficial to the baby more? It is beneficial to the baby, but you know, research have shown, I guess, and I don't want to make it into, I let's just make this into, I don't want to make this into a, like a black or white thing. But right, right. Black women, they, mm -hmm. Research have shown mm -hmm. that they only breastfeed up to six months. Okay. And other cultures will breastfeed up to three and four and five years old. And so I think why I think it's the lack of education. You okay. know, when we're taught, oh, it hurts. Or if the baby's not latch right, we're thinking, oh, this is too much. I can't mm -hmm. take it anymore. Mm -hmm. Or we have to go back to work or we have other right. children. We have other obligations and duties. And I think what happened is, is there's other, you know, concepts that you can use. You don't have to always put the baby on the breast. You can pump. Right. You can freeze your milk. Right. You know what I mean? Right. To give the baby the nutrition that it needs. Okay. When I, when you look at a list, there's, it's a list about this big, mm -hmm. all of the nutrients and vitamins, the probiotics that the baby gets right. to formula of that small and what the baby gets when they, you actually feed them formula. Right. right. So I would like my baby to get all of this, right. Right. you know, versus. Okay. So when you said to freeze and pump, that made it better for <laughs> me because as a four, three, four year old, you, they're not latching on, they're getting the milk, but they're getting it from possibly well, three or four year olds do latch baby. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. We've, we've, I've had families that have breastfed up until five years old. Wow. Yeah. Because of the, um, calories or the calcium that's in the milk, mm -hmm. all of the benefits and nutritional value mm -hmm. that's in the milk, they would rather give. Like I have a mom now, our baby is two okay. and she gives it the breast milk inside of the, his um, bottle or his sippy. Oh, okay. okay. Um, and then during COVID mm -hmm. was the best time to breastfeed because the mom gives the antibodies in her right, body that right. protects the baby. Right. So, yeah. Oh, okay. You, well, as they say, you learned me something new. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what is, um, what are some of the major misconceptions when it comes to postpartum? Yeah. yeah. You know, a major misconception is it's only in one culture. Mm. That that's not true. Everybody deals with postpartum on some sort of level. Mm -hmm. um, it just depends on what type because yeah. you have, because I'm a perinatal mental support to mm. mom, mm -hmm. we have psychosis. Mm. We, no one really talks about that. Mm -mm. We have anxiety. Mm -hmm. We have OCD. Mm -hmm. We have schizophrenia. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah. And sometimes moms have to be on medication for that. But we just say, oh, postpartum is just postpartum, mm -hmm. but no, it's a lot of, it's a list of what postpartum mm -hmm. look like. Mm -hmm. I think some of the misconceptions is also is that, um, dads don't go through postpartum. Yeah. yeah. That's a misconception. Mm -hmm. Dad go through postpartum. Mm -hmm. He's just as involved mm -hmm. as the mom is. Right. And so, or he should be. Right. And so, um, that's another misconception as mm -hmm. well. Okay. Well, we're going to take a really quick break. And when we come back, you have some projects that you have, upcoming events. Yes. And we're going to talk about that and, and take a dive in that. I could really actually talk to you for a whole nother hour <laughs> because I have so many questions. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, we're going to take a quick break, guys. And when we come back, we're going to have more with Dr. Tanisha Bibbs. We'll be right back. Hi guys, it's Dr. Cassandra Parks Evans, affectionately known as Dr. San, and this is your segment of Let's Learn Love. Hi guys, this is Dr. San, and I'm here with another segment of our series that we're having, Physical Intimacy for Couples, and Miss Trish has another question for me. Yes, ma'am. 
maintaining touch um, of one another often. Yes, that is very, very important because who not, who doesn't want to be touched? You know, mm -hmm. we want to feel desired. We want to feel like that our partner is still attracted to us. Mm -hmm. So touch is very important, whether it's just holding hands, whether it's, you know, the light touch on the back or mm -hmm. whatever, it forms a connection. And when we form a connection, energy flows. And mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of energy. So we want to make sure that we keep that positive energy flowing. So mm -hmm. touch is very, very important, mm -hmm. um, especially you know, when it comes to just anything, um, like I said, it could be the slightest touch. It can be a hard touch. But what we want to make sure is that our partner understands what type of touch that we need. Mm -hmm. So if it's too hard for you, you need to express that. If it's too light, you need to express that. Mm -hmm. Because again, it's all about getting what you need in your relationship. So make sure that you express that. Make sure that you tell your partner what you need in your touches. And that has been this segment of Let's Learn Love. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. And if you have any other suggestions as far as, you know, maybe you want to see another type of segment on here, let us know. And until then, this has been Dr. Sam with your Let's Learn Love segment. We're back here on Style with Trish with Dr. Tanisha Bibbs. Uh, before the break, we were talking, you have so many projects that you're doing, that you're working on, and also events is coming up. Let's talk about your magazine, uh, Baby Whisper. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that magazine actually was birthed literally about eight or maybe I want to say 10 years ago. Oh, okay. Uh, one of my babies, she's 10 now. So mm -hmm. her dad was like, we'll be going to call you because we mm -hmm. just love, you know, when you come to our house and help us. She was a a baby, like I want to say six months old. Mm -hmm. He said, we're going to call you the baby whisperer. Wow. So when I was looking for a name for the magazine, mm -hmm. I couldn't find one and mm -hmm. it just popped baby mm -hmm. whisper magazine. And so the magazine feature, mm -hmm. like what we've been talking about, right. lactation consultants, mm -hmm. pregnancy, um, this edition, this June edition, mm -hmm. we have my son and my grandson is going to be on the cover. Mm -hmm. Um, we also have featured several celebrity, mm -hmm. um, especially one that it was a surrogate to a few celebrities, oh, okay. um, you know, and we put people like that on the cover and anybody mm -hmm. really like that's right. working in business, entrepreneurship mm -hmm. that can, that is a mom, mm -hmm. a dad, we mm -hmm. pretty much put them on the cover or mm -hmm. we'll write a story about them. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. and so it's, so it's a edge, it's something that you can, it's a tool, I it's guess a tool that education. you can, and mm -hmm. it I, actually sounds like it would be even a good gift to a, a new mom to Absolutely. be able to learn. And, yeah. 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 We have, um, people that work in government that, mm -hmm. have, you know, given, um, articles, mm -hmm. um, especially when, when Roe v. Wade came, right, we talked right. about that. Mm -hmm. Um, we talked about, uh, CBD and pregnancy. Mm -hmm. like, it's so much conversation surrounding mm -hmm. pregnancy and mm -hmm. postpartum and mm -hmm. all of that advocacy. Right. Uh, so we give a lot of information in our magazine. Okay. And, and how often does the publication come out? So we did, it's every quarter, okay. but now we have also a digital part, uh, that oh, comes out every quarter as well. Okay. So yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, and you also have a blog, right? No, well, we do have a blog, but mm -hmm. it's a connected to our baby with some magazine. Okay. Gotcha. Um, but okay. we have books. Yes. Yeah. And that's what I was going to next. You have a book. It's, we didn't even touch on this. Ask a doula, a transition guide for new mothers. Yes. Talk about that. That book, uh, was written by myself and mm -hmm. also my co-author, um, uh, Jean Turner, who mm -hmm. happens to be 33 year, uh, practitioner in okay. women's health mm -hmm. and pregnancy. And so we talk about, um, the first six weeks, that mm -hmm. is the most difficult week we notice. Mm -hmm. So we talk about swaddling. We talk mm -hmm. about safe swaddling, safe sleep training, mm -hmm. talk about pacifiers, mm -hmm. all of that. Um, eating healthy. Mm -hmm. I think Ms. Jean talks about, you know, women, once you have a baby, mm -hmm. if you're spotting and bleeding and all mm -hmm. that, what to do, okay. um, because she's a nurse. So she, you know, was able to put her expertise in there. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that's pretty much, we have a new book that came out, mm -hmm. um, that actually is on Amazon now okay. and it's a bird's eye view of birth work, a bird's eye view. It's okay. an anthology mm -hmm. and we have six birth workers oh, okay. ranging from mental the mental health part of it, mm -hmm. birth. Mm -hmm. We have a young lady that's in that 
book mm -hmm. that actually gave birth to her own child at 43, Ooh. 42 years old. And she had no doctor to support. Wow. And she was, she's a midwife though. Okay. She does uh, midwifery and all that. So mm -hmm. and then we have, um, another author in there that is from the Netherlands. Okay. And she was able to talk about postpartum as a perspective from, um, ancestral, mm -hmm. you know, realm mm -hmm. and all of that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I talk about a lot about lactation in there, mm -hmm. uh, and stress and depression mm -hmm. during lactation mm -hmm. and being encouraged. Okay. So. And you, you reminded me of something you mentioned the midwife. What is the difference between a doula and a midwife? Well, there's a big difference between a doula and a midwife. Okay. So, uh, a midwife, depending on what type of midwife you're talking about, if you talk about ancestral midwife, mm -hmm. uh, transitional midwife, mm -hmm. medical midwife, mm -hmm. medical midwife, are going to be in the hospital. Okay. They're going to deliver in the hospital. Okay. Um, and I want to come back to one myth I wanted to say. Okay. We, Go was, ahead. we was talking about um, as it relates to having a baby and not being able to have a water birth because you had your first, this is your first baby. Uh, That's okay. a myth. Okay. If you are with a midwife, which I had all of my pregnancy except for one with mm -hmm. a midwife and mm -hmm. I'll never go back to, you know, without a midwife. Mm -hmm. They're just supportive more they're mm -hmm. there you know mm -hmm. but anyway the difference is a doula provides non-medical support okay okay and mm -hmm. then a midwife depending if she is licensed like mm -hmm. a doctor mm -hmm. then she can provide services in the hospital okay but there are other midwife there's a huge midwife community mm -hmm. that deliver babies uh without they, they're still up under like a medical, but right, they're right. not in the hospital. Okay. So they might be at a, a birthing center or facility, mm -hmm. uh, those type of things. So, oh, okay. Yeah. So okay. there's a big difference. It's I mean, a big difference. Yeah. Doulas, they go, they could, you could be a birth doula, mm -hmm. which you provide support. You can go to the hospital. Mm -hmm. You can help the mother breathe like with the Lamaze. Mm -hmm. Um, or you could be at the home with a home birth. Okay. A water birth, okay. uh, you know, whatever the mother wants to do. So. Okay. And off camera, we were talking about, um, the, uh, another myth, uh, because I had always heard that when you breastfeed, that it causes you your as we use Useless. now your waist to snatch snatch back uh, when you breastfeed. But you said that is a myth, but there's some truth to it. Can you break that down? Yeah, it's just once the so basically when mom breastfeed, mm -hmm. it it causes her uterus to contract back mm -hmm. to its original state. Okay, and so that's where you feel that it feels like you're still having um, contractions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so basically, that's basically what it is. Yeah, and it's, yeah. I guess that's what they, for lack of better word, is my my waistline is being snatched. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, but uh, <laughs> but uh, anyways, but that's the real technical term for okay. it. That you know, it's just kind of going down and down and down, and then it only happens like that for about three or four, three weeks okay. because the muscles are kind of coming right. back together. Right. Um, but it happens a couple of weeks and then it kind of stops. Okay. Yeah. All right, and we have a uh, few minutes left, and I wanted you to kind of share your event that you have coming up um, in November, if you would. Yes. So we have a award show for mm -hmm. Baby Whistle Magazine. November 11th, 2023. Mm -hmm. um, this is going, we're going to be able to work, recognize birth work in the mm -hmm. categories of, of, if you work like a photographer mm -hmm. who does, you know, pregnancy shoots mm -hmm. uh, nominated. I have a young man who does designing mm -hmm. for babies. Mm -hmm. um, we're also going to do presidential award oh, okay. in birth work okay. and also a doctrine of humanitarian okay. in birth work. So this okay. is our first, we're excited about this yes. one, but yeah, so we're honoring, um, around, I think it's 10 people, okay. um, you know, for doing their work advocacy. Right. We have right. people that are on the field every day in mm -hmm. legislative to mm -hmm. pass laws yeah. about, you know, the maternal mortality yeah. rate in the world. So, yeah. 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 Well, congratulations Thank on you. that. All much, much uh, success to you. Thank you also for coming in and hanging out with, this Absolutely. has been a long time coming. Yes, I'm super excited. <laughs> Thank you. But thank you so much for hanging out. This is Dr. Tanisha uh, Bibbs. Make sure you check out her. She has so much material that's available to you. So if you have a loved one who is expecting, give them literature, give, give them 
with literature so that they can learn what's going on with their body before, during, and after uh, their pregnancy. Thank you guys, we will take a break. We'll be right back. Hi, my name is Trish Stanley and I'm the host of Style with Trish. Be sure to check our show out on every Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on our new network, VTV Network. All you have to do is download the free app and you can view our show on Amazon Prime, Roku, Apple TV, as well as Android. Be sure to check out all things Trish at TrishStanley.com. Remember, this is the place where the everyday woman reigns. Every day a woman reigns. Have you ever thought about having your own talk show? Well, you don't have to question yourself any further. From concept to completion, Mark Squared Studios can easily take you through a traditional three-step process for any video production. Whether it's a small business commercial, talk show, cooking show, or even a web miniseries. Contact us today and we'll help you unbox your creativity. I'd like to thank my guest today, Dr. Tanisha Bibbs. I love that she takes care of the expecting moms and even after uh, the baby is born, a lot of times we tend to forget uh, all of the stresses that come along with not just uh, the baby, but also the husband, the wife, whomever is, is surrounding that family. We tend to celebrate in that moment and we go back home, but we forget that there is extended care that is needed and that are in place. So even if you can't afford uh, for a doula to come in or a midwife to come in, make sure you go and pick up her products that are readily available for you or your loved ones to help you through that transitional period. Again, thank you, Dr. Tanisha Dibbs for hanging out with us. Thank you for tuning in. As I always say, love isn't love unless you give it away. Way.